Riders, fans, creative lines, British GP. What chance does a privateer have? Welcome to Silver Crown. What do you say to a factory ride? Truthfully, this segment should be called Crazy <laughs> Lines for Psychopaths, but I digress. First off, we're going to talk about Ken Roxon and his quad. Josh Hill was actually the first guy to jump the quad in Super Bowl, and then Kenny stole it for the main events. Well, it was on the section of the step on, step off that was taking everybody out. We took out Chad Reed. We took out Josh Grant. It took out Clout. It took out Dino. A lot of people. But let's watch it in real time. Triple. Quad. Man. Holy moly. Butthole's got to be about that big when something like this happens. But let's let's break it down as to how he was able to do this. So Tomac is behind him. And watch Tomac's body versus Kenny. What is Kenny doing on that triple? So he's tripling and he is sitting down. Because a seat bounce gives you so much more lift than just a preload by just squeezing the bike and pushing with your legs and pushing down on the frame and then standing back up. So Kenny is sitting down. Major seat bounce to get as much lift as he can. Seat bouncing is actually the slower of the two preloads because you gain more lift. And usually when you're in the air longer, the wheels aren't on the ground pushing forward. So it's slower. That's why scrubbing is faster than just normally jumping. Well, seat bouncing is slower than all of them, but sometimes you can only get over certain obstacles with that lift. So he seat bounces. Boom, he's able to do it. Watch Tomac. Tomac is just soaking it up. So he's essentially scrubbing the triple standing up because he's not going for the quad. And because of how much more lift Kenny has, it's only thousands of a second faster just because he's not having this last obstacle. But because he's having to seat bounce it, he's gaining more lift there. And that's the only way he was able to make it consistently. And because of the, the track conditions out there, what was nice is there wasn't a whole lot of ruts. Usually in these bottom of these sections at a typical Supercross race, you will get a lot of of ruts in between this dirt to me reminds me kind of on the west coast not so much california but you know maybe colorado or so M maybe you know nevada uh vegas supercross denver supercross where it's just real dry and it gets kind of powdery so that's how he was able to jump this so we'll watch it again in real time so you can see it seat bounce lift Next up, we've got another quad, but it's after the start. It's arguably the first right-hander, and it is a step-on, step-off. So we'll watch Mitchell Oldenburg do it on the 250 because I didn't see anybody on the 250s jumping it, right? But on the 450s, they were able to do it, and how were they able to do it? Well, because the theme is this whole seat bounce, watch Brayton and Roxon and what they do to get over this. Boom. All right, let's back it up and break it down just a little bit. So Brayton and Roxon are setting up. You can see there's really no ruts in the way, which is nice. But since it's right out of a corner, it's hard to be able to stand up. And I don't think they would have enough oomph to be able to turn, get the bike lined up, stand up, and still preload. They'd probably end up casing it. So watch how much they squat the bike. So they're sitting back on the motorcycle, and you'll see Brayton, he'll have kind of like this hip curl to get this to bounce off. Boom. And then Kenny does the same thing. Look at him. They slide back on the back of that seat and bounce up, and they're able to, to make the quad. So we'll watch it one more time. We're up. And last but not least, saw Mitchell or Oldenburg do this. It's after the triple into the right hand into the whoop section. A lot of riders, because it's a 90 degree corner, they had to go wide around the berm to get enough momentum to get into it. And some of the guys that ended up jumping, well, they went to the inside and they end up going triple, triple, triple. And Oldenburg, he had a nice wheel tap into the whoops and we'll break it down. 
Boom. There's a couple things to point out here. So if you watch him land off the triple, watch his shifter foot. Boom. He shifts up right before getting into the whoops. And the terrain is incredibly slippery right now. So what he's doing is he's wheel tapping so that he can triple in and set up the right rhythm to go triple, 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 all the way through the whoop section. You can see he's already lifting up the front wheel. And why is he doing this? Because it's kind of off camber, because he's coming in at an angle, it would be hard for him to have the speed to triple in right away. So a wheel tap is a nice alternative to still getting over an obstacle, but not having the actual speed to jump over it because you use the motor and the suspension to hop over the last obstacle. So here he is, wheel tap, and then he's just going to blip the throttle so that it's uh, and gets him over the downside for that triple. Boom. Wonderful. Execution is beautiful. It's awesome watching these guys ride a dirt bike. This is Johnny Hopper. Keep it tuned to WFO. Till next time. Barap! And don't forget, I'm doing another goggle giveaway for Patreon and channel members to YouTube this month of October. Appreciate all you guys.